In a town where people turn into mindless zombie-like entities, a woman realizes that she's immune to the affliction. However, as more people around her start becoming violent, she discovers that her immunity comes with a dark price. When the power flickers in her house, Beth wakes up while it's still dark. She looks outside and finds someone standing on her lawn. But when she draws the curtains away, the figure is gone. The woman soon prepares for work and updates the board by her door, indicating that it's been 98 days since the sun rose. She then drives across the snow-packed roads until she reaches her assigned street. Upon arriving, the watch person radios to the main station that there are no events in her assigned area. She then logs in her hours on her chart when the power around her starts waning and buzzing. Suddenly, a man slams against her window. He claws desperately at the glass, so Beth calls dispatch, reporting that she needs the transport team for a stray in her area. To Beth's surprise, the rabid man backs away. Thinking quickly, the woman locks her door just before the man aims for the handle as if recalling how to use it. She then puts the car in reverse to escape but stops when the man gets on top of her windshield. He keeps clawing at the glass again, making the woman wonder about his behavior. Finally, Tom arrives and puts the crazed stranger into a catch pole. Beth questions why the man is acting more aggressively than most strays. So Tom explains that the strays have been behaving like that lately. Since this is the first time she's had to contact someone from the transport department, Beth shows him a photo of her father Eric and asks if he'd seen him. He says no before tranquilizing his captive. With a crazed man docile, Tom jokes that the strays just need to be treated with a bit of humanity. After her shift, Beth goes home but senses someone watching her from outside. She later shares this with her friend Natalie at the bar. The woman points out that Beth is the only one who stays in her quadrant, so she might not be used to being alone. She also advises the woman not to blame herself for what happened in the past, knowing that she is on edge because of it. Beth asserts that she can blame herself for not seeing the danger. She recounts that the event also replays in her dreams constantly. With this in mind, Natalie offers her sleeping medicine, but the watch person refuses. After this, Beth goes to the counter and greets the bartender, Carol. She orders a whiskey, but the bartender worries that it'll cause side effects with her medicine. Beth mentions that she hasn't taken any, which Carol finds odd. Everyone in town is prescribed serotonin supplements to avoid turning into strays, but the watch person claims she hasn't needed them. Later, Beth dreams about a snowy road where someone is crawling towards something. This has her waking up. Not wanting to go back to sleep, she goes to a club instead. There, she meets Tabby and immediately starts flirting with her, leading to them getting intimate afterward. This helps Beth sleep. When she does, however, an entity with her face watches over them. The dream Beth kisses Tabby, only to use this action to siphon something out of the woman. After this, the dream Beth finds sores on her thigh. This makes Beth wake up in a panic, and luckily, she sees that her skin is clear from the sores. Hours later, Beth catches Tabby breathing heavily in the kitchen. She assumes that the woman is tending to a hangover, but Tabby claims that she doesn't drink. Instead, the woman starts talking about the darkness. Worried that she's turning, Beth advises her to take her medicine, but Tabby thinks it's pointless. The woman starts convulsing, then approaches a knife on the counter. Without showing fear, Beth asks the woman to leave, and Tabby does as she's told. As soon as she leaves, Beth is called in to go to their main facility. The woman soon arrives and takes Natalie with her to meet the innkeeper, the man studying the captured strays. They've found someone who looks like her father, but before taking them to him, the innkeeper asks if she's taking her medicine. Beth lies that she does. Suspicious, the man mentions Beth's mother, who used to work in the facility before they did. However, they haven't figured out what the woman discovered before she turned and passed away. The innkeeper then takes them to the holding cells, but the man they've captured isn't Eric. Still, the stray suddenly gets violent upon seeing Beth, leading to him getting restrained. After leaving the holding area, Natalie asserts that their captives might be becoming violent because of their inhumane treatment. The innkeeper dismisses this, but Natalie pities the strays, seeing them as victims losing their minds. Again, the innkeeper dismisses her and leaves. On another day, Beth enjoys a public hot bath when she meets Derek, the man grew up in the neighborhood she's watching, so they discuss how different the world has become. There aren't many people anymore, so Derek complains about not meeting new faces. Beth hints that there's always someone new before swimming away, uninterested in the man's flirtation. She soon drives back home, only to spot a stray standing alone in a wooded area. Quickly, she reports this to dispatch, but all transports are busy, so the dispatcher advises her to keep an eye on the stray until someone arrives. Right after the call, the man starts walking away. With no choice, Beth hesitantly follows him, but the man suddenly turns and starts charging at her. He captures and pins her down. 
but luckily, an old man throws him off her. Beth recognizes the man as her father, but Eric runs away immediately. The transport team arrives and captures the stray, which delays the woman from going after her father who has already disappeared. She soon shares this event with Natalie, who assures her that at least she knows her father is alive. Worried, her friend checks if she's taking her medicines, and again, Beth lies that she does. Unlike everyone else, Natalie isn't fooled by this. She knows Beth doesn't take the medicine, so she wonders how she's surviving without it. Just then, Derek arrives, having figured out that Beth goes there. The two drink together, and when the topic of the medicines is brought up, the woman confesses that she doesn't take any. This is because her mother was taking them when she turned, so Beth is convinced that they don't help. Derek wonders if this was before the doctors learned that depression triggers them into turning, but Beth still thinks they haven't really understood what's happening. She points out that the strays are getting worse, and since the recent ones also took the medicines, it might have been a side effect. Soon, the two head to Derek's apartment where they spend an intimate night. Like with Tabby's time, however, the dream Beth also goes over Derek's sleeping body and siphons something out of him. As she does, sores on her shoulder blade appear. Beth wakes up hours later and hurriedly checks herself for sores. Luckily, she's clean. In contrast, Derek is huddled on the side of the bed, complaining about how Beth kept him up late. Unlike his friendly mood yesterday, he is cold towards her and tells her to leave. With no questions asked, Beth leaves. While walking to her car, the snowplow driver Jason offers to give her a lift. She politely declines, hinting that she knows what he's aiming for. Jason defends that he's just lonely too, though he relents and lets her go on her own. On her way to the bar later that evening, Beth notices a man running out from a large house. She checks around, thinking that it was her father again but ultimately doesn't see anyone. Hoping to investigate the house, Beth invites Natalie to go on patrol with her the next night. Her friend initially refuses since she's not used to seeing the strays up close. In the end, Beth convinces her to join. While driving around, Natalie notices how the houses in the neighborhood are still well maintained despite being empty. Beth thinks this is so people can still hope things will return to normal. She suggests snooping inside a house since no one else lives around there. With this in mind, she parks in front of the large house she saw yesterday and invites Natalie to break in. Her friend hesitates since they can get caught, but Beth argues that she's the watch person of the area so they'll be safe. Finally, the two break into the house and explore separately. Unbeknownst to Natalie, Beth uses this chance to find her father. She reaches the attic and finds a sleeping bag among other junk indicating that someone was hiding there. Just then, Natalie calls her as she's found strays surrounding their car outside. Since Beth left her phone in her car and the house's landline is disconnected, they can't call for help. They can't lock the door either since they broke it. This makes Natalie panic, forcing Beth to confess that she wanted to check the house since she might have seen her father there. With this, the woman takes responsibility by volunteering to draw the strays away. She instructs Natalie to take her car and drive around to the back of the house where they can meet. Soon, Beth heads out and lures the strays away while Natalie runs into the vehicle and drives it around. The watch person rushes as fast as she can around the road only to see more strays up ahead. Luckily, Natalie arrives, so she jumps into the passenger seat and the two escape. Despite escaping unharmed, Natalie berates her friend for leading her into the house without telling her that her father might have been there. Beth excuses that she knew Natalie would say no if she told her. However, she tries to convince her friend that the adrenaline rush was exciting. After everything that happened, everyone has been playing things safe, and Beth believes that this rush is what they need. Unconvinced, Natalie points out that not everyone has immunity against the strays like her. Beth argues that she's not immune to the strays since the thing that turns them is already in their brains. Still, she admits that whatever keeps her from turning might be something her father knows. This is why she is trying to find him. Despite this, Natalie argues that Beth's actions were selfish. After this, Beth visits Derek, only to find him still in the exact position she left him yesterday. Realizing that he's turned, Beth calls for dispatch. She watches as Derek is taken into the holding cells, worrying at how he turned. She then tries to leave, but her car gets stuck in the snow. With no choice, the woman shovels her vehicle out but gets alarmed when streetlights start waning around her. She tries to ignore this, but after a while, she yells at the lights, demanding to know what they want from her. Thankfully, Jason passes by and helps get her car out of the snow. Stressed and desperate for a distraction, Beth kisses him. This leads them to get intimate later in his house. Again, the dream Beth appears and siphons something from Jason during his sleep. This time, however, the man fights back and chokes her. Beth also wakes in the dream as she feels herself getting strangled. The man pins the dream Beth down until another man pulls him off of her. The woman watches as the other man siphons something out of Jason instead, and to her surprise, she sees that it's her father, Eric. Eric warns her that they're coming for her since they want back what she's been taking from them. With that, he leaves. 
Beth wakes up hours later and finds Jason still beside her. However, she knows he'll turn soon, so she calls dispatch, only to find that all transports are busy again. With no choice, Beth takes Jason to the facility on her own. There, she sees that Tabby is also detained, confirming that all three people she's recently been with turned after her nights with him. This has Beth admitting to the innkeeper that they might have turned because of her. Suddenly, all the strays start getting aggressive. Tabby manages to break a window to escape. She chases after Beth and pins her down, but Tom pulls her off. Before he can tranquilize the woman, however, Tabby gets the upper hand, so Beth takes the syringe and injects her with it. With the strays being aggressive around her, the innkeeper tells Beth to leave and not return. Due to these revelations, Beth shares the dream she's been having with Natalie later. She comments that the dreams are so vivid, and she feels that they connect to something in her. Bothered, she asks her friend if it's possible for dreams to affect their reality. Instead of answering, Natalie advises her to take her medicines like everyone else. She she stresses that her not taking them could be putting people at risk. Beth considers this, admitting that she can't tell what's real anymore. The two then lounge together and end up falling asleep. While they do, the dream Beth appears again, and she targets Natalie next. As she does, Tom appears and injects her with a tranquilizer. Beth wakes up and finds Tom just arriving in their room. He complains about how he's been suspended because of what happened that morning. So Beth apologizes for causing the commotion. The man isn't interested in an apology and demands an explanation for why aggressive strays keep appearing around her. The woman admits that it might might be her fault, but she doesn't know why and how it's happening. All she knows is that she slept with the people who recently turned. With this, Tom asks how the electricity in her house is behaving, pointing out that strays tend to interrupt power and are repelled by electrical fields. Surprised by this information, Beth asks him to explain. The trio takes their discussion to Beth's home, where Tom clarifies that he's seen strays avoiding electrical fields, though he isn't sure why. He then wonders if this is connected to her father, who used to be an electrician, but Beth admits she isn't sure. Soon, Tom goes home while Natalie offers to stay with Beth despite her friend's worries. As she's taken a bath, Natalie dozes off while Beth falls asleep on the couch. This unleashes Dream Beth, who goes straight to Natalie. Sensing this, the real Beth gets up from the couch and fights to pull her other self off her friend. However, the entity pushes her away, forcing her to wake up. When she does, Beth checks the bathroom, only to find Natalie gone. She heads to the bar to find her but only sees the guitarist and Carol staring at her intently. Thinking that they've turned, Beth leaves. She heads to the facility next, but the innkeeper insists that Natalie isn't there. He also points out that the strays got aggressive again as soon as she arrived. With this, he interrogates her on what she's doing with the victims, knowing that at least half of the current strays have some connection to her. The woman insists that she doesn't know, so the innkeeper threatens to surrender her to the strays. However, Beth begs him to let her find Natalie, asserting that she's in danger. She shares her theory that she's influencing the victims through her dreams. The innkeeper doubts this, though he hints that whatever she takes from the strays to turn them, she might be able to return it. With this in mind, Beth asks for his help to find Natalie so she can try to reverse the effect of her friend has turned. The two soon drive around the town, finding strays just sitting on the snowy road. Beth then heads to the indoor pool and searches for Natalie while the innkeeper remains in her car. During her search, Tom approaches Beth, asserting that Natalie isn't there. He assumes that the woman has already turned because of her, and the watch person desperately denies that it was her fault. Suddenly, Tom attacks her, blaming her for the strays. He pins and chokes her on the floor, only for Beth to grab a shard of glass and stab him in the arm. During this, a dazed Natalie emerges from the backseat of Beth's car, so the innkeeper hurriedly exits the vehicle. Natalie then climbs into the driver's seat and turns the engine on, using it to run the man over repeatedly. After ensuring that the man is dead, the stray retrieves his keycard before driving off. By the time Beth comes out, she finds her car gone and the innkeeper dead. Natalie soon arrives at the facility and uses the innkeeper's keycard to release the others. Beth eventually runs into a group of strays on the open road and rushes away. She ends up on the same path as her other dreams, so Beth follows it until she reaches a building where the town's main power line is. To her surprise, Eric is there. The man keeps his distance from her at first, but ultimately lets her stay, noting that they'll be safe there since the electricity confuses the strays. Recalling the other person in her dreams, Beth asks if this was where her mother was heading before she turned. Eric confirms this, adding that his wife might have known that the strays were coming before they arrived. Beth then asks why he's been avoiding her, and her father hesitates before admitting that he has the same ability as her. They can siphon life energy from other people using their dreams, so the only way to keep themselves safe is to be separated since their abilities can attack one another. This leads Beth to conclude that her friend's turning was her fault. Eric explains that when they connect with someone,
someone, they also take something from them. When they've taken so much that there's nothing left, that person is lost from the world, thus turning them into strays. The revelation breaks Beth's heart, knowing now that her seeking companionship led to her friends turning. Driven to do something about it, she takes a bottle of sleeping medicine from her father's things. Eric asks her to stay, but the woman just says goodbye before running off. Beth rushes outside and lures the strays back into the facility. There, she takes a handful of medicines and sits on a couch in the holding cell, waiting for the strays to arrive. The medication takes effect, and as soon as the strays arrive, Beth falls asleep. This allows the group to reclaim the energy her dream self has stolen from them. Dream Beth watches this from the side, with her body weathering as the people regain their energy. Soon, Natalie and Derek recover, and the former yells for her friend to wake up. Beth awakens with a gasp, but her face has weathered as she's turned into a stray. Her dream self gazes upon her in tears before walking away, accepting the woman's choice to sacrifice herself to avoid dragging more people down with her loneliness. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.